Hi there, I'm Rav, and I'm here to tell you how to play Moza. Mosasaur, or Moza, is a large marine reptile that is the grabby boy of Beast of Bermuda in the second apex of the ocean. With it being pretty fast, fairly tanky, and of course its signature move, its grab and thrash, Moza is definitely the acker of the ocean and the reason to not go swimming deep or not paying attention while drinking from large watering holes. Make no mistake when I say that Moza is definitely the bully of the smalls in Beast of Bermuda, and you will have lots of fun doing so. Moza has two primary attacks. Moza's main attack is a bite that does pretty good damage and essentially no injury. You are more than likely going to be using the main attack while strafing, which we will go over later. But other than that, you are going to want to use the second attack. The second attack you will have is a dart. This attack, unlike some of the other darters, doesn't do more damage than your primary attack, but is good for quick hits. Dart is also good for moving around the map though, and you should try and conserve as much as you can, because if you end up wasting your AP and stamina, you can end up in some pretty sticky situations. Moses abilities. Grab and Thrash. This is technically Moses' third attack, but because it needs to grab first, I put this under abilities. The first part of the combo allows you to grab prey with a lower weight class than yourself, which you can easily see by smelling the creature, and if you're wondering how much you weigh, you can look at the O menu and look at the bottom left corner. Do keep in mind there are some creatures with natural slippery like Chrono and Apato, so be very wary picking them up. The second part of this ability is Thrash, where Moses' primary attack being N1 gets replaced with Thrashing, which has smaller damage intervals. This attack does have its own damage increaser called Powerful Neck, which is more effective than pure damage talent and can be paired with a talent called Asphyxiation to make it so creatures drown faster. Exhausting Bite does not stack with the Thrash though, so even if you build it, it won't be useful if you're only thrashing, although Sharp Teeth does because it's a small hit. Finally, Moses' last ability is the Keen Senses talent. I won't go over it too much because I explained it in my last video, but Keen Senses basically allows you to see through walls when you're pressing your smell key. Now that we've gone over Moses' attacks, let's go over how it plays. Mosasaurus, I can safely say, is the Scourge of the Sea, and is most players' most hated creature due to its grab and so-called lack of counterplay. However, I think once you start actually playing Moza, you will realize these players are talking nonsense as it's pretty easy to avoid the aquatics in general in most situations, but I'm not going to go much into countering Moza in this video. With a signature move and a very good moving ability, Moza can take care of most of the mid tiers in the game with no problem other than maybe a few and even some of the apexes have problems with it as long as they're in the ocean. As you get larger, the prey you can also grab gets larger and easier to carry, making you scale into the late game of your growth the most. Now I'll run you through some matchups for Moza. The first matchup we are going to go over is the mirror matchup being Moza. Nobody likes Moza mains, and especially not other Moza mains. I'll be quite frank and say that Moza and Moza combat is pretty annoying, and in my opinion worse than Chrono's matchup depending on how big you are. As smaller Mozas, you will essentially be darting each other, which if you have played any aquatic or semi-aquatic, you will know that this can be just as hard to do as there is more skill involved due to strafing. As bigger Moses though, it's literally whoever grabs who first. And if you grab first, make sure you have enough AP to get away so you can recuperate or have a friend try and defend you. Most Moza players build full speed anyways, so if you need to just run away, or if you can tell the other person does not want to fight, just move on from each other. The Noodle one or two elasmos are really not a problem and can be dealt with somewhat easily as you can grab them which will force them to dart out of your mouth doing injury. However, in a group, elasmo is a chainsaw as once you grab someone, if they are smart, they will let themselves get thrashed while their buddies mow you down since you can't dart away. If this is happening, you need to find a crevice or tunnel where you can avoid getting hit from all sides and hope they go away. If you are in a group of Moses, you do stand a better chance, but they are still nothing to scoff at. Tyrannosaurus Rex Rex in general is a creature you don't want to grab for long periods of time. God forbid it's an Aqua Rex. Rex, even with the reductions from getting grabbed, can still almost kill you when you're thrashing it, and taking a bite from them is pretty much game over for you because they do so much injury where they can pretty much just swim up and attack you. Your best option is to dart and then grab them to get as much distance as possible away from the surface, and after letting them go, start biting them from behind. I personally wouldn't recommend bringing them down into a cave as that only makes it easier for them to hit you and overall, I would just leave this alone unless it's super easy. Apato is the heaviest creature in the game to pick up and in most situations you will need at least two powerful jaw to even attempt to grab them even at the larger growths. Even the smaller Apatos can be hard to grab as they have a natural slippery to protect them and they hurt a lot even with just them using whip. 
However, if they are not on land and instead in the deeper water, they do have a weak spot by the back of their legs that you can bite at, or you can attempt to dart them to deal as much damage as possible. As an alternative, you can also go for the neck if they are very deep, although it's a bit riskier. This matchup also prevents you from getting one of the best food sources in the game, being para players. So if you see the apatos are being lazy, it's best to grab the para sooner rather than later. The Hippopotamus Ever since I started playing this game, Lurdu has always been a Mozapod's best deterrent. Specifically, the good Lurdu players that actually know how to play and don't run at the first sight of trouble. Yeah, you know who you are. With double the group limit of Moza and being fairly tanky, this herbivore is a hard hitter in the aquatic scene. Even before their weird work, they were pretty hard to contend with and the only thing that's really changed is their HP pool, so they are slightly less tanky than before. Which overall does not really change the matchup considering they can just out damage you now. The best option for running away from them is to go away from the shallow areas where they can't abuse the bottom walking buff and grab them whenever possible so they have to dart out and take injury. I will warn you, much like the Elasma matchup, they probably will want this though, so be careful. Icti Well not as tanky as Lurdu, Icti hits like a truck even at the smaller sizes. Icti can out damage you and is super nimble in the water, and strangely enough, has a group limit of 7 instead of 6, which is more than double than the Mosul limit and one more than Lurdu and Elasma groups. If Beast of Bermuda ever wanted to add the spine into the game, they might as well now, because that's pretty much what you'll be facing with these guys, if there's a group of them. This is mostly because, at this time, the Storm buff gives a massive damage increase, doing even more than Lurdu darts in the water. Personally, the most I've seen is about 455, I think, but for the ocean creatures, that's quite a bit, especially when the Rex of the Sea, aka Chrono, does about 325 to 350 damage per bite. Grabbing them is your best course of action as the injury they take seriously affects the dart they will be using and they can't go into deep areas so much like Lurdu, don't let them use the bottom walking buff. You can also attempt to dart them as your dart still does a lot of damage, but locking them down is key in this fight. Chronosaurus is the bane of everything in the ocean's existence as it counters everything that most of the aquatics can do good. Chrono dishes out a lot of injury, making swimming away or darting away impossible. It can go into elusive, which blocks keen senses, plus it can even lunge in it with enough points and it has a natural slippery that makes thrashing it very hard even with the grab builds. Your best bet is to try and rotate yourselves between Chrono and dart through as fast as possible to avoid getting hit. And yes, this does mean that you should probably outnumber Chrono if you're going to face it. If you're pretty good at strafing, you can also try and do this as well. It's a bit riskier though, because if you get hit, you're just taking free injury. Taking a lunge by one of these guys is pretty much a death sentence, and if they lunge bite you, you're pretty much done for. With it also being the only true bruiser in the ocean, second being Lurdu, believe it or not, it would not be a bad idea to get a minimum of two strong bones due to this problem. But, if they don't hit you, your chances of running away are pretty high due to your dart. Since they are naturally slower than you, just make sure to use it wisely, and not spam it a bunch. Pretty much everything else on the Beast of Bermuda land roster. Most of the terrestrials are easy to fight as you can easily get behind them once in the water, or grab them. Unlike Chrono, Moza can for the most part attack targets at any point when they are crossing, so use your own discretion when attacking targets and shoot for trying to get them as deep as possible. If you decide not to grab them, you can easily strafe around them, or if you can dart through them. The biggest thing to try and learn is to learn which ones will kill you when you grab them and which ones won't. Now we're going to go over the builds for Moza. As usual, you don't have to follow this guide and you don't have to think the builds are good. This is just what works out for me. For Moza, the most popular build by far is the speed combat build. You can easily go anywhere on the map and chase most things down no problem. Running away from Chronos is fairly easy, and if you're like me and build two strong bones, you might even be able to get away if you get hit once. It also is good at fighting the other things in the ocean, since it can now keep up with them while doing close to the same damage. However, this build doesn't have much defensive talent that it can afford to build, and both bruises of the oceans are rough to fight if you get hit since you are capitalizing on speed. The second build I see is Combat Speed, where it is the reverse of the first build where Moza capitalized on its damaging talents to give it the extra edge in fights. This build comes in two variations being Grab and Bite. The Grab version of this build goes down the bottom part, and you will have access to Powerful Neck, which as I stated earlier, increases your thrash damage and asphyxiation, which drowns targets. You can also get damage as you go through AP, although healing is a nice alternative if you don't want to get it. This build is good at dealing with the majority of the land terrestrials and the semis, as now they will be forced to leave your grass unless they want to drown. Just as a quick reminder though, asphyxiation does not affect other aquatics, meaning Moza, Elasmo, and Chrono. Exhausting Bite does not work with Thrash, so you won't be able to take stamina from other creatures while thrashing. Thrash does count as small hits, so Sharp Teeth works, but that means Thick Eye does too. And that is going to conclude the second part of the builds.
for the last build I'm going to be going over, which is technically two different builds. They are both equally pretty dog in my opinion, with one basically banking on the fact that you won't die easily, and the other praying nobody finds you, being combat survival and, and speed survival respectively. Comet Survival is very strong, and Moza's Survival Town so really puts it on steroids because Moza actually has a pretty good health pool and becomes extremely tanky with the damage you can potentially do. But that's the key word, potentially. The current meta in the ocean right now is speed, so things like dart and lunge builds for Chrono are very good at the moment, which this build will struggle to catch and potentially fight with. Speed Survival is a joke, and basically you won't be straight up fighting anyone because if anything strong finds you you're gonna die because you can't compete with their damage i really really don't recommend this build unless you have a plan to get to some pretty gargantuan sizes which is possible gauntlet but i heavily don't recommend at least for the casual player life strategies and pros and cons moza is a pretty fun aquatic to play as it has pretty much the best of both worlds being slightly tanky and pretty fast which in the ocean makes it one of the top things to play grab is simply by far the best utility combat ability in the game in a group of Moza's, it is very good being able to vary builds and have each other's backs, especially with Moza being a generalist, it can be fairly easy to grow outside of just combat. I do think that it is hard to succeed though on Moza long term. The Oceans are a very competitive and a very tight knit and paranoid group of players, myself included, who made the most niche side of the community so it can be hard to make friends and in general find other players. Chrono and Lurdu both dealing lots of injury counters you quite a bit, and in particular with Lurdu, once you get hit, it's really hard to get away, due to basically Lurdu being a better aquatic most of the time. The easiest way to counter Moza is literally just to not go by the water and take dumb risks to go somewhere fast, when nowadays you can always just take a portal or wait for the tide to go down, unless you're on Rival Shores, which, yeah, then I kind of feel bad for you. Also, why are you playing on Rival Shores still? And lastly, Moza in general has a fairly high skill ceiling. Darting and strafing is not really easy for new players to just pick up and it takes time to learn, particularly when you combine the two and learning where all the crossing and cycles are can also take quite a bit of time. Overall, if you want to succeed with Moza, stay low and only come out when you need to. If you want to live a long time, don't fight other big to same size Mozas, Kronos, Rexes, Apatos, and again Rexes, as those are what has ended up killing me most over these past four years. Try not to beat yourself in bad areas. Moza and the other aquatics are super weak on land, and don't be afraid to reach out in the group finder to find others that want to play. I say this last one as even though I said the aquatic player base is pretty paranoid, yes, I'm including myself, a lot of the people still want to play with people. Group play is always preferred, even if it's with randoms. Although maybe don't do that during peak hours when the main people are on. That would be almost like putting a target on your back. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Next video is going to be Lurdu, and then after that, Webinator or Mega Raptor, depending on what I got time for. And then we'll see you after that. Other than that, good luck guys.